Thursday morning to you. This is Coffee Break Reflection. Pastor Jerry Scott here. I'm so glad to have the opportunity to share with you this morning. Thank you for giving me a few moments. My topic, sound the alarm. You know the trouble with being a prophet? Nobody likes them. <laughs> ah, that makes me laugh. Prophets are those people who hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and speak for God. It's an unenviable task of calling people for change and pointing out sins and failures. Uh, don't we love the comforting words of the gospel? I do. Don't we love the worshipful words found in the Psalms? I surely do. But oh, those prophets. <laughs> Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, Joel, Micah, Zechariah, they go on and on about death and destruction and God's judgment. Do you, like me, tend to leave those books of the Bible unread? We shouldn't. They do have a message for 21st century Christians. The words are hard, yes, but important. They can make us sit up and take notice of the ways of a holy God. In my scripture reading this morning, I went to one of those books the work of Joel, he left us a little book, just three chapters, a few pages in the Bible, but it's full of thunderous sermons. Joel, to give you a little historical context, lived in Jerusalem about 800 years before the time of Christ. And apparently we read from his book that the nation had experienced an awful plague of locusts that had stripped the fields bare, that had left people and livestock on the brink of starvation. In those locusts, Joel saw a foreshadowing of something even far worse coming for the people of God. He saw the invasion of foreign armies that God would allow because of the decay of faith. Moved by the Spirit, Joel cries out in the opening words of the second chapter of his book, Sound the alarm in Jerusalem. Raise the battle cry on my holy mountain. Let everyone tremble in fear because the day of the Lord is upon us. It's a day of darkness and gloom, a day of thick clouds and deep blackness. Suddenly, like dawn spreading across the mountains, a great and mighty army appears. Nothing has been seen before or ever will be seen like it again. <laughs> Oof. We may recoil from those kinds of words, but we need them. We need them. America, much like ancient Judah, tends to hate people who raise their voices in a call for return to the Lord. Ah, shut up, go home, tell somebody else your bad news. But the truth is, an alarm needs to be raised. A prophetic warning needs to be spoken of the destruction that will inevitably follow rejection of the ways of the Lord God. When we become consumed with ourselves, when we lose the ability to see the spiritual realities, to live by God's values, we need those brave souls who've heard God's voice and who will fearlessly sound the alarm. As I read Joel's message, I didn't just read gloom and doom though. Thankfully, I saw words of hope. Joel speaks of God's faithfulness, his desire to save those who will turn to him, who will leave behind their sinful ways. Listen to what he writes further down in that second chapter. Turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting and weeping and mourning. Don't just tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to anger, filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not to punish. Oh, what joyous words. It's a terrible mistake to take stock of our spiritual poverty, as some do, and decide there is no future. We're headed... For the junk heap of history, that's not the word of God. Instead of exclusively railing on the failures of people out there, I believe the better choice for Christians, you and me, is to return to prayer, to practice genuine repentance so that we can lead the way to spiritual renewal. We cannot point people to a place we've never been. Ah, yes. This nation I love is intoxicated with self, staggering like a drunk, consumed with pleasure. So many bent on doing their own thing with little thought, perhaps no thought even, to what is right or good or just. 
our worst sins in 2021 are self-will and disregard almost entirely of God. Justice is compromised. Corruption is rampant. We are so indulgent of ourselves in most every way imaginable. Americans, who as a society at least enjoy unparalleled wealth and power, have turned things into idols, becoming a materialistic people, pleasure mad, chasing happiness and ever more diversions. And should anyone even suggest that it might be wise to pause and reflect that we could benefit from a large dose of humility before God, that God even waits for us to come home, that person finds insults and dismissive words like most every prophet ever has. My prayer, my prayer today is that God the Holy Spirit will place the spirit of the prophets in his people, that we will let his words come alive in us, that we will ourselves turn to him and lead the way, as I've said, to repentance. And then we can turn the corner from judgment to hope. Here's a word from Joel. Rejoice, you people of Jerusalem. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for the rains he sends are an expression of his grace. Once more, those autumn rains will come, as well as the rains of spring, and the threshing floors will once again be piled high with grain, and the presses will overflow with wine and olive oil. Again, in the second chapter of Joel. The words of Joel that I love most are the words that he uses to promise the outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God who will refresh us like spring rains refresh the earth. The word from the word I leave you with this morning in this coffee break come to again from that second chapter of Joel at the very end of the chapter. God says, after I have poured out my rains again, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughter will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And in those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. I will cause wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and smoke, and the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon blood red before that great and terrible day of the Lord. But anyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Joel chapter 2, verses 28 to 30. A great promise. Yeah, nobody likes prophets. But oh, what an important role those who speak for God have in every time, in every culture, in every people. Will you hear what the word is saying to our hearts? Let's pray. Father God, help us not to despise your word. Help us not to somehow think that we are wiser than you, that we can live in our own ways with complete disregard for your will. Lord, sound an alarm in our hearts that will cause us to realize where we are plunging headlong toward destruction and help us to turn to you. May we know your abundant compassion, your great mercies. Lord, I pray that as we live for you today, as we walk with you, that your will would be accomplished in us and that the glory of Jesus would be on full display in our thoughts, our words, and our actions. In his holy name, I ask these things. Amen. Hey, friends, thank you for the opportunity of sharing with you today. Always a joy. God bless you. I hope to see you tomorrow morning. And until then, walk with Jesus.